Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is July 4th, 2024. Let's talk about a great fight, not a good fight. This is a great fight. I'm telling you that it's unclear what's going to happen in the fight. The fight styles could not be more different. Right? You have a guy who is a determined knockout puncher. He's high volume. When I say high volume, folks, this guy threw five rounds against Mercedo Gista. Pretty good fighter. Landed 117 power punches. In other words, this is volume. This is power. This is a guy on his front foot right, who's crashing the pocket, who's giving you an ultimatum, right, if you cannot prevent me from throwing and landing power shots, your corner might as well throw in the towel. I'm going to be here all day. That fighter is William Zapata. Now, I need for people to understand that Zapata is unbeaten. Right? And he's fighting a guy who only has seven KOs. Cepeda, of course, is a southpaw. This is that hard-hitting southpaw that's very hard for right-handed fighters to figure out. The guy he's fighting happens to be ambidextrous, but fights out of an orthodox stance often. Now, here's where things, to me, derail. Right? I don't mean to be bold with this play. I'm just going where the odds take me. Understand, even the casino's uncertain on this fight. You can tell based on the over-under. Now, William Zapata is going off right now, believe it or not, at a little bit greater than a 15-to-1 favorite. You should know where I'm going with this. 15 to 1. Unbeaten fighter. The 15 to 1 narrative implies that he's going to come across the ring. He's going to corner Giovanni Cabrera. He's going to wilt him. He's going to land a lot of power shots. He's not going to have fear of Cabrera's punch. Because, again, Cabrera only has seven knockouts. Understand, this is a guy who is trying to be deep in the pocket. Understand, Zapata, accomplished body puncher. He's not in there just headhunting. He's so close to you that he's repeatedly landing shots to your body as well. Right? And this is, of course that supremely prepared athlete who can throw enough punches where again he lands 117 power shots through five rounds right before that they announced that he had landed 146 punches before that right and understand most of these this guy's punches are power shots I have the highlights of Zapata against Mercedo Gesta in my favorites folder right now. It's worth a look. But what I want people to understand is there is another side to boxing. Boxing's actually a craft. A guy who knows what he's doing on his back foot. A guy who is so confident he can drop his hands and still be able to dodge most of your shots on his back foot. A guy who's going to force even a determined high volume power guy to pick up his feet and turn. That guy's going to have a chance. Folks, welcome to Giovanni Cabrera. You're getting a plus 797 on Cabrera simply to win. A plus 797. 
right? Understand the resume. In my favorites folder, you're going to find two different sets of highlights. I believe they're both relevant, right? One is a short 90 second series of highlights, and it's going to look like in those highlights, Cabrera could not get out of the way of Pitbull Isaac Cruz's left hand. Now, here's where I'm going to break from boxing. I think that Pitbull is underrated. I'm astonished, and I mean this, I'm astonished that Teofimo Lopez is calling out Pitbull. That's a dangerous fight for him, and understand, Pitbull's front foot. It's not like Pitbull is going to fight like Sander Martin did, or Jermaine Ortiz did against Teofimo by being outside, forcing Teofimo to try to find them, which Teofimo showed us he really couldn't in either fight. No, no, Cruz is front foot. Cruz is a guy who's coming in the pocket, wants to be in the pocket, and is playing games. This is the short guy who has thought things out to the point where you can't follow his eyes. Right? Cruz looks this way, then he's throwing hellacious left hands. Understand, like Philippe Ergovic, another guy I think is underrated, and I say so after he got beaten by Daniel Dubois. You'll notice that there's no tell on what Cruz is throwing. So Cruz is able to throw punches and land flush on Giovanni Cabrera. Right now, just understand, in that fight, and I consider Cruz to be a tough matchup, at least as tough as William Zapata. In that fight, Cabrera goes the distance. Think about that. And you notice the reason he's able to go the distance against a buzzsaw like Isaac Cruz, who I still maintain, gave Gervonta Davis, Davis' toughest fight. The reason he's able to go the distance is because this guy has spectacular feet. Look at the feet, folks. This is a guy with spectacular rhythm. He's the boxer who, as you come to him, He's calm. He knows he has great feet. He knows he has great timing. He knows how to lean away from your shots. He's high risk. Doesn't even put a hand up at times. Right, folks? This is like young Ali. Right? He knows he's 29. He's not quite as young as young Ali was. But let's just say this is the guy who's convinced that he's the superior athlete, he's offbeat enough to avoid getting hit with your shots, and he's convinced he can counter you. Now here's where we, gamblers, step in. Right? Let me also point out too, Gabriel Flores is a pretty good fighter. Cabrera beat him by a wide margin. In other words, this is the guy who is telling you, look, I'm going to look like I'm right in front of you. But you won't be able to find me in the ring for the entire fight. I may only have seven KOs. But that should tell you how good I am. In terms of being able to go the distance and outpoint guys without having a big punch. So... Here is the story on this fight. And I know it's going to be a short line to bet on this fight because Zapata's a 15 to 1 favorite. Right? A lot of people think Zapata's going to win this fight but don't think there's enough profit in it for them. Right? Here is the theme to this fight it's who's fooling who. Right? That great tagline from the Callum Smith. Rocky Fielding fight. Who's fo fooling who? Is Zepeda deserving of being a 15 to 1 favorite against Cabrera? Is Zepeda going to come across the ring and destroy this guy? Set up a pocket, throw heavy punches, throw a lot of them, 
let this guy know, look, you can touch me as long as I get to touch you. Let's have the shootout. You can hit me with your bullets as long as I get to take out my 357 and hit you with my bullets. Let's have at it. Is that the fight we're going to have? Or are we going to have a fight where Zepeda can't find Cabrera? Isn't that Cabrera's entire career? Now here's the kicker. If you believe that Zepeda deserves to be a 15 to 1 favorite. And we're going to do away with that 15 to 1. We're going to find a way to have action. Excuse me, Zepeda. We're going to find a way to have action on Zepeda without paying 15 to 1. Right? If you believe he's a 15 to 1 favorite, then why do we have this 9.5 round over under? that's paying you close to even money. It's a minus 116. Because understand, folks, if this fight goes the distance, William Cepeda will be in a whole lot of trouble. Right? The only way you should believe that Cepeda should be 15 to 1 is if you believe he can come across the ring and finish Cabrera. That's the only narrative that makes sense. If you have so much doubt about that narrative, that the over-under gives you to the midway point of the 10th round, that's what nine and a half rounds mean. If they're giving you to the midway point of the 10th round at a little bit less than even money, something's wrong here. Let's profit off what's wrong with this fight. The bet I'm recommending is the Cabrera at a plus 797. Folks, that's just a smidge below 8 to 1. Right? This is a guy who went the distance against Pitbull. Look at the scorecards. They're close. Don't go by what the TV announcers are saying. Go by what the judges actually scored. Right? Just understand, if the fight breaks a different way, where Zepeda has to pick up his feet and cannot land the high volume and power that he's accustomed to, if a boxing match breaks out, I'm just telling you the 15 to 1 long shot is going to be in a lot of trouble. I like Cabrera simply to win at a plus 797, hedged with the under 9.5 rounds at a minus 116. Right? I mean, just, just understand. I'm just playing the odds here. Right? I'm not emotionally attached to where I care who actually wins the fight. I just want to win the bet. I have a lot to play with here. Since I'm getting a plus 797 on the Cabrera simply to win side of the play. So understand, I can bet three times as much on the under nine and a half rounds. If Zepeda truly belongs as a 15 to 1 favorite, if he comes across the ring on Cabrera who can't match him, in volume or power. And if he gets the knockout like he did in the Mercedo Gesta fight. And again, I have those highlights in my favorites folder along with two sets of highlights from the Pitbull Cruz Cabrera fight. If in fact Zapata is all that and a bag of chips and gets the stoppage, hey, I'm good with that as long as it comes before the midway point of the 10th round. And of course, the under is a minus 116. I feel a hell of a lot better about that than betting on a minus 1,516, which is what the current lines are. But if something else happens, if Zepeda has a hard time finding Cabrera's body, and this is a guy who stands upright, 
right? The timing, the movement is everything. If, in fact, Cabrera's movement is just too great, too great for Zepeda, and if Cabrera starts racking up rounds, can you imagine what being in the arena would be like? If you're watching a fight that had a 15 to 1 favorite and he's struggling in the 7th and 8th rounds, you're thinking to yourself, man, this fight's going longer than I thought it would. Then at some point, the realization hits. Wow, is Zepeda even going to win this fight? Right, so... I like Cabrera, plus 797, right? Who picks long shots who are going off at a plus 797? I plead guilty. Hedged with the under nine and a half rounds, right, folks? If the power puncher is a 15 to 1 favorite, he should be able to win by stoppage before the midway point of the 10th round, shouldn't he? Because you and I know if the power puncher hasn't gotten the stoppage by then, right? Think George Foreman against Jimmy Young, right? If the power puncher hasn't been able to finish off the other guy, right? Think Tyson against Buster Douglas, then they're going to be problems. Suddenly you'll be looking at the fight and you're going to be thinking, man, is my almost 8-1 to one underdog actually going to win this fight? Folks, Cabrera is tough. I like Cabrera simply to win, hedged with the under nine and a half rounds, but I need for you to understand the risk involved. You have a 15 to one favorite here. If Zepeda gets a stoppage after the midway point of the 10th round and he's unbeaten, or if it goes the distance, and then, of course, Zepeda, again, the 15-to-1 favorite. The guy everyone thinks is going to win the fight. Wins the fight on the judges' scorecards. You lose it all. Those are my thoughts. That's the risk I'm taking. Let me hear from you in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.